This is the Eastern Box Turtle. Isn't she a beauty? She has the most beautiful brown eyes. It's a girl. Now, if the eyes are bright red, like this young man right there, see those bright red eyes? That's a male. It's Meet Your Backyard Neighbor Day out at Mousetail Landing State Park. The Eastern Box Turtle gets her name because she can close up like a little box inside of her shell. Now, females have a high dome-shaped shell to them. Was this a male or a female? A male. Male. If he has a low dome-shaped shell, it's a male. Where curious kids connect with common critters, in this case, our state reptile, on a more personal level. If you find a little turtle in the wild, you need to leave it alone and just admire its beauty. If you bring him home with you, he's going to try his best to get back home because he has what's called a homing instinct and you're going to put him in great danger. And while this might seem like a biology lesson... Notice the decoration on the shell on the back? This helps to keep the turtle safe on the ground. He's foraging around for food, looking for those little snails and those little juicy worms. And his shell mimics the sunlight shining down through the trees. It's really an art class. So now we're going to draw his snake-like head. Remember his cousin is the snake? But this little guy does not have any fangs or teeth, but he does have a beak like a bird. These youngsters aren't expected to be the next Pollock or Picasso. Now, sometimes when we start to draw wildlife, it's kind of intimidating because you see all of these details at one time. But drawing animals like these box turtles helps them better understand and appreciate wildlife something artist Pat Qualls has been doing since she was a child. When you draw wildlife, you have to really look and identify what characteristics make up that species. And when you're counting and drawing toes, that makes a connection there. And they're going to see that these little guys, you know, they all have feet and they all have toes like we do. And they start to appreciate wildlife more when they do that. It's not something just out there in the environment. It's something close to their heart. The road to the heart often starts with the fingers, whether they're touching turtles or animal fur. You feel it? The kids get a chance to feel what they look like. For the smaller kids, it's very important for them. It's a tactile sense. Now these are very soft. Say, some women love mink coats. I'd rather have the minks walking around out in the wild. They can feel the textures of the animal skins and they'll be able to know what they're trying to paint. Wildlife is all around us, but many times we're too busy or moving too fast to notice. Look at your world around you. Look what you're missing when you're just going from the house to the car to the school and back to the car and back to the house again. This whole world around you that you just walk past each day and if you just slow down and take time to look at the different trees and look at the different animals that call the woods their home and how they play a part in the environment around them. Now if you'll look right here in front of us, there's some raccoon tracks. Sometimes making that connection with nature takes a little imagination or some modeling clay, as the students discovered when they looked for and made molds of animal tracks. Tracks tell a story. If you find a track and you can't tell whether it's a bobcat or a coyote, then one clue would be the toenails because all dog families like coyotes and fox can't retract their claws. But the cat family, bobcats, house cats, and mountain lions, they retract their claws. So if you just see pads, then you know it's a, a cat family. But if you see pads and claws, you know that it's a canine family. While drawing turtles and making molds of animal tracks is fun and educational, the best way to really help kids connect with nature is to let them interact with it. And on a hot summer day, there's no better place than a nice cool creek. So if you get the kids out there and you can get their feet wet and get their hands dirty and let them see the wildlife up close, look at whether they have scales or feathers, or they carry a shell with them like we did today, then they're going to remember that animal and take care of that animal in the future because they've made a connection with it. 
Our Australian neighbors call these yetis. We call them crawdads or crayfish. Crawdads go backwards, so if you like have a net behind them and then scare them, they'll jump back into the net. I've caught a tadpole, a baby tadpole. It's fun to like pick up the like the tadpoles and catch them and actually look at them and learn about them. It's the kind of education you just can't get in school because there's no substitute for hands-on learning to artistic expression. At school, they'll just tell you the thing without like showing you it at all. Maybe a couple pictures, but out here they show you, they'll demonstrate it. See, this guy's pincher should be as big as this one. People will Google it and they don't see it in the wild. They can look at it on film, they can look at it on their cameras and their phones and TV, but it's not like being out and actually touching things. Oh, neat, a little bitty baby. I can see it, what it's doing, instead of reading it out of a book. That was cool. It's fun having stuff that you get to draw and stuff. Kids are artists by nature, and they love wildlife by nature. So you put the two together, and you got a good combination for a wildlife conservationist in the future. For many of these kids, that future is now, thanks to a newfound appreciation for turtles. They're kind of getting endangered, especially sea turtles, and we don't want them to get extinct because they're one of the oldest uh, animals in the animal kingdom. And if we get them extinct, we won't have as many old animals at all. I'm Ken Tucker on the Wild Side.